Well, let's try this again. This is my second time doing this today. But I guess it's Sunday. I might as well just go for a Sunday drive and make it twice as long. Just had to make another trip. The tractor supply down in Meadville. Which is probably about 25 miles at least from me. To get this. So I can fix my plow. My plow coulter. Down there earlier today. To exchange these tanks. For those that don't know this. You can buy this torch kit from Tractor Supply. I forget what it was. I bought this thing probably 12 years ago or so. And I think I paid paid seven or eight hundred dollars for the whole thing. Cart, tanks, and everything. And don't hold me to it. But if I understand their terms and everything right, you're buying the tanks. But you can take them down there and exchange them. So, like I say, I can take these tanks anywhere and get them filled, I guess. But then again, they're Thoroughbred, Nord, whatever the brand these are. So I'm not 100% sure I actually own the tanks. All I know, it's easier to go down there and exchange the tanks. Of course, when I bought them, I bought them from the closer tractor supply over in Cory. And it's it, not that much difference in distance, really. But for some reason, you can't, they don't exchange them there anymore. The only tractor supplies around me that I can exchange them are Meadville or Warren. And I'm not driving clear to Warren. That's like 40 miles away or something. And generally only one tank goes empty. This time it happened, both tanks emptied about the same time or were just about empty. I don't know if it's a good price or not. This is what they call number three oxygen tank, size-wise. This is $49. Here we get uh, Yeah, $49 for that oxygen. And that's what they call number size two acetylene, and it's $65. So it's, it's $115 to exchange these tanks. And this will last me three, four years at least. The only big thing is you got to fill out, now it says, Cylinder Ownership Acknowledgement and Release. Thoroughbred Industrial Cylinder Exchange Program Shipping Shipper Certification. So, I mean, they don't use any serial numbers or anything. You basically say, you take this down there, an exchange of tanks and this and that. Well, so I went all the way down there this morning, come back, hook these all up. This one, my gauge moved. This one did nothing. So, well, something's wrong with regular. Went monkeyed around here. Finally, I pulled this off, I opened this up, and there was nothing in it. And it had the cap on it, the valve was closed, it had their seal on it. And. It was empty. So I had to make another trip all the way back down there. And I just about killed the whole day now. And just got back. So hopefully, now that I got some gas, it's. Yeah, now that gauge goes up. Wow. Well, I guess I'm not fixing that again today now. They say they're cheap. Well, I shouldn't say cheap. I don't know, maybe there's expiration or time on these hoses or something. 
it's just bird shit. I have more spots are spraying, but. This explains my life. I go to do something, try to accomplish something, try to get ahead, and get one problem. Tank empty. So I make an extra trip, go run, get another tank, now I got that, now I got another problem. And I still can't fix my original problem. Not that that necessarily needs to be done. I can plow without it, I guess, and probably just continue to plow without it, I guess. But, bad thing, we got about a quarter of an inch of rain the other night. Didn't dry much today. Today's beautiful today. Today's drying. And I probably could be down to my cousin's plowing some of that or something. But I figure well, I'll give it one more day and worry about this. I got, I got a clean barn anyhow. Other stuff to do around here. So, I don't know. I know what tomorrow's plan is. I'm hooking up the discs, and I'm, I'm probably going to go down to my cousin's and disc up that one field. I'm hoping that one field down there that I can just disc two or three times and maybe work it up enough. Because it was corn a couple years ago, and it should, should, um, uh, maybe work up pretty decent. If not, I'll at least crack it open so it'll dry up so it'll plow better. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to plow, disc this field out back that I just got done plowing. I'm hoping, I say maybe by late tomorrow, they'll dry enough. Tuesday's supposed to be good. Maybe I can at least get that field in by Tuesday. Get some corn in. But, I don't know. So, I guess, like I say, that explains the extent of everything of what I do around here. So, let's see, find something else to do. Oh yeah, I thought I'd just mention here too. I don't know what I did to this thing the other day. I guess I held my tongue right while I was checking things out or wiggled a wire just right or something. Now nah, it hasn't been missing a beat, been running fine. Like I said, I was gonna clean the air filter, which I'm still gonna do here yet. But like I said, I was waiting until I got, I actually had, somewhere I have it, I should say, it's air filter oil for one of these K&N air filters that put on vehicles. They have a foam element on the outside you oil up. I thought I knew where it was and it's not. So if I do clean that, like I said, I'll just use regular engine oil like you do. Just dump some in, squeeze it around, let's work its way through it and do it that way. But like I say, ever since then, it's been running fine. So I don't know what the hell is going on with that. So I guess I'm going to get my bucket switched around here and get this barn clean. And i got to get hay, too. So I don't think that's anything thrilling anybody wants to watch. Go over this thing tomorrow. What's that key coming out for? I guess it's rusted in there. And I don't know why these bolts here keep coming loose. I tightened this up the other day before I went out there and plowed. I just turned that about four or five turns. I'm afraid to put Loctite on it. Like I said, I don't want to, don't think it's that necessarily. I have to get lock washers on them or something. Dry out the threads. Probably make two inch grease on them, but like I say, they shouldn't work loose. But like I said, I'm going to get the barn cleaned here and work at this. Well, it's the next day here now. I guess today's Sunday. I thought yesterday I was going on a Sunday drive. For some reason, I'm getting my days mixed up. Not that it matters, but yeah, I got, I said yesterday when take took care of that stuff, and I said blew that hose. Well, I decided I'm not gonna worry about trying to get them plows going just yet. So I thought, well, I get the discs out today. You can go at least disc this field up, at least get some corn in now, and then worry about doing more here later. I can still plow, start maybe start cutting hay or whatever. And I started going over this, and again, I'm not going to worry about this wheel here right now. It's got one to carry it. Once it's lowered to the ground, the wheels are you don't matter anyhow, unless I'm into some real soft ground, help pick it up out of the ground, but I don't 
think I'm going to have that kind of problem. So I did go get a new hose. I guess I got the next size bigger hose. I guess what was on here is 3 16 and I got the quarter inch. Not that it matters much. I guess it's going to go through gas maybe a little bit faster because when you shut it off and bleed it out, you're going to have more gas to bleed out. But uh, it was only $2 more anyhow, so it wasn't like there was that much more difference. And the thing is, I think something screwed up in my oxygen gauge. Because when I shut the torch off, I still hear hissing and there's a vent hole, I guess, or some kind of bypass hole right here. I'm not sure if something's sticking in here or, or a di probably a diaphragm went bad in there. This gauge is not moving, but I guess it's... So I don't know whether it's better off buying another regulator for the oxygen or if there's a way to rebuild this. I gotta look into that yet. But I had to get this all out because I found this bolt was broke. So that's what holds this whole disc up in the air. So it was just hanging there from this bolt. And of course, and it's got these sleeves here that help keep that gap. And well, of course, that bolt was seized up in that sleeve. This bolt was froze, so I ended up torching them off. So I guess it's a good thing I got my torches fixed. Which then gave me an excuse to go get them hoses. And I'm actually surprised Tractor Supply has three quarter inch bolts. But they didn't have three quarter inch lock nuts. I put, uh, so I double nutted it, so I had to go to a five inch bolt. It just fits in there, but I mean, if something happens to it, I'll torch it off again anyhow, so what's the difference? So I got that fixed. That bolt there was broke, so I had to torch that one out and get that fixed. But the bolts, like I needed a seven inch bolt, and the longest they had was six inch, so it'll work for now. And I really, that bolt is kind of, doesn't make any difference anyhow. It, it's, this is where it slides to change your depth and just move the bolt holes. Well, when you're pulling the discs, it's pushing up against this bolt anyhow. So that's just there to keep the space. But it fixed that and then the nest was froze up. So I heated that up and got that loosened up. Not that I'm going to probably change it. So now I'm finally just getting to go out back here and try this. Which I guess is all right. I took a ride out there this morning and the last stuff I plowed is still, it was drying but it's still dark. Like I said, I don't think there's anything there I'm gonna get stuck in or worry about some of them I have to make sure I go downhill on. But I'm gonna go out there, get over it at least once tonight, give it a chance to air out tomorrow, and then maybe go hit it again. And then I'll get the column altar out. It ain't much to do to the column altar. It'll run if it or it won't run, don't matter. And then hopefully, I say I got until Tuesday, so hopefully Tuesday I'll get a few bags of corn in the ground. So, like I say, it's just, figure you're going to go do something, take five minutes to get ready to go, and you spend all day screwing around to get going. And again, I would have had all this stuff ready a month ago if I knew for sure that this stuff was going to happen. I say no sense putting money and time into something and then not do it. So I put it off and that was that. So now I'm going to head out there and hopefully not get stuck. I don't think I'm, I doubt if I'll add any of that onto this video. I think I'll just make a separate video out of that. So... And that'll cover two days out there. I'll get some footage of it. Working it and getting the first time over. Maybe, depending on this, maybe I'll get it over twice tonight, which would be nice. It'd be nice if I could and then get it planted tomorrow. That's what I'd like to do. And then Tuesday, I can work on something else. And again, I should be mowing hay. Yesterday on my 
riding around. I saw about four different guys mowing hay, but again, when grass is like this, it's still hard to get it dry. And they might be making baleage out of it for all. Well, I know the one guy's not, but some of these guys I saw cutting might be doing baleage. We're all tedding it out. But again, they might trying to get it dried a little bit faster, dry down enough for even baleage. So with that said, I'm rambling too much here. I'm going to go out there and see what the hell I can do. I figured I'll go out there with this. Because that's one thing. I don't necessarily want to dig down too much when I start spinning, so this one might be better. Who knows? But it saved me switching tractors around. <laughs> Have that international sitting there for something else. But, so we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.